Well, guys, it has been a whopping two or so weeks since last time I went on this whole vlog thing where I reviewed an episode of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Since then, I have gotten a haircut catered to a dinner date and drawn a bunch of pictures. So, yeah, we can finally talk about this episode, the landmark 100th episode of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, the episode titled Slice of Life. And it's a very interesting episode. The basic premise of this episode is a Cranky Doodle and Muella from... Uh, what was it? A uh, friend in need in a previous season of My Little Pony that got way overshadowed uh, by the Smile Song are now getting married, and the whole episode is just focusing on the town and the overall preparations. And that's literally it. And I have to say, when I, I first heard about this episode, I was very concerned because the episode was titled Slice of Life. Now, I don't have anything against the Slice of Life style of storytelling, you know, kind of down to earth on an individual level when it comes to these kinds of stories, but if you go too realistic, it has a tendency to get rather boring. And, uh, and looking at the freeze clips for the sneak peeks of this episode, I was a bit doubtful because it looked like the episode was going to focus on a bunch of fan favorite pony characters. And that's exactly what happened, and I'm very impressed. So, um, th that was probably a good time for me to talk about the main background six. Uh, which is pretty much why I'm calling them. Uh, the, those characters are background ponies, if you will. Um, the confirmed names of some are Octavia, Bon Bon, Lyra, and Derpy Hooves. Um, the two with um, kind of sort of unconfirmed names are DJ PON3, a.k.a. Vinyl Scratch, and uh, Time Turner, a.k.a. Dr. Hooves, which uh, these six ponies, I honestly find them to be the most overrated characters in the entire show. E while I can still tolerate them, that is. I don't like the great and powerful Trixie. It's so annoying. But honestly, the, my big thing is these characters are just background characters, and that's pretty much the exact reason I think them overrated, because fans take one glimpse at them and they're like, oh my god, oh my god, I think it's so fun, you know, that, that kind of thing, and just, and I, I was very worried that this episode would become so bogged down in background cameo, you know, appearances slash fan service that it would ultimately hurt the overall episode, which, honestly, it really didn't. Um, uh, to, to make a comparison, um, on the worst end of fan service spectrum in terms of TV shows and such, I have a uh, Thomas the Tank Engine episode called Duck and the Slip Coaches. And basically, that whole fracking episode is just, Duck knows best. He is so smart. He is so great. You do not deserve that shed spot, Emily, because Duck is almighty. Ugh. And, you know, that, it, it was just incredibly mean-spirited. It it took total disregard to the other supporting characters just to focus on this one thing that the entire fandom was obnoxiously saying, this is the best part of the show, I must see it, I must it is mine, ah! Um, and thankfully they do not fall into this trap. 
But uh, in doing so, there is, I'm probably guessing there is going to be a follow-up episode explaining what the main six were doing fighting this really weird bugbear thing that attacked Ponyville. But that, that, that brings me on to some really great jokes. Like, it answers questions in a comedic fashion. Like, what do the citizens do in Ponyville whenever Twilight and her friends have to encounter some sort of issue? And it was just so hilarious. Oh, it, it gets incredibly meta. Uh, especially in its references, not just to My Little Pony, but uh, to, naturally, Doctor Who, because, you know, we've got Time Turner, and they did a really great job at making his personality stand out, regardless as to whether or not you've seen Doctor Who. They make him very eccentric about science, very excitable, just all around a very likable guy, you know, just like the Doctor, but... Again, you don't have to watch Doctor Who to get that reference. Nor do you have to watch The Big Lebowski to get a huge homage to Big Lebowski sometime during this episode. Um, yeah, so basically this episode is like, you can watch this without any knowledge of the fandom and still walk out of it with something. And that is something I really, really applaud the writers for doing. And there, there's this little speech at the end of the episode that really, really tugs at your heartstrings, especially if you are a hardcore fan of the episode of the show. It pretty much it, it has a double meaning, and one side to that double meaning is all the fans out there who have helped us, you know, make this show as popular as it is for supporting us for everything. Thank you very much for your support, your appreciation, your dedication. And to those people who wrote this story, um, M.A. Larson, you're welcome. Um, thank you for producing a really great prod product that caught us off guard, that surprised everyone. Um, thank you for being considerate of the writing and aware that for some people this will be a first time episode and making sure that it stands alone. And thank you for not punishing anybody who was a fan of the main six or Princess Celestia. Just thank you so much for making this out of the pure love of making the show and how much the fans have contributed and all the good that the show has offered. Um, with that said, there I do have some nitpicks about this, but two are going to drive me crazy. The first one being a base cannon chase scene. And I, I don't probably don't have to explain anything beyond it's a chase scene with a base cannon. And it it's so bizarre it's just one of those moments where your mind just goes... <clears throat> and, um, also, the two other things, um, cameos of other characters, um, one of those being a changeling, which, it, it helps support something I plan on writing for Hasbro, but I have to ask, what is he doing there? What is he doing in Ponyville? Like, 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 what is the changeling doing there? What, what, what's its story? What's its gender? What's its character? What, what is it doing there? And uh, another thing that I'm pointing out is the giant sea serpent from all the way back from the series premiere. Um, Stephen, I... I believe that's his name, but what was he doing here? I, uh, with, with the other ponies I mentioned by name, it makes sense, because the fandom really, really latched onto them, and, and they really wanted to see a story involving these characters and to uh, develop them, but what was he doing here? Um, 
I'm I'm pretty sure if you were to look up fan art of him, it'd be pretty minimal. But you know, just best to the best of my knowledge, it's just sort of a wink to people who watched the very first episode. So whatever. Um, as far as future episodes in regards to these supporting characters that are now canon, um, I would not like to see a series based around them, just have them be support characters. And that's pretty much what makes this episode special. It's all about support. It's congratulating everyone for the support, and all around, yeah. At at this point, all I can say is, keep up the good work, guys. Congratulations on making it to episode 100 without hitting the bump of people getting sick of what they're seeing. And um, here's to possibly 100 more. Here's to possibly a brand new series, you know, to continue that 100. Just... Here's to more success, more creativity, more of what you writers love, and for the fandom to continue on throughout the years to come. So, until next time, this is Joe Bag saying, DHX, you really should have tried to find Noah King. She She's the perfect voice for Vinyl Scratch. So, until next time, see you folks then.